Edge Impulse simplifies uh, model creation and optimization, makes it easy for any engineers, whether you're uh, new into the ML space or the embedded okay. space. For most developers, you can just jump in, create a user, create a model, see how it performs, iterate, tweak things here and there. And with our help, with our docs, uh, tutorials, videos, we have plenty of that. It's easy to actually, in very short time, get mo performing models into uh, the device of your choice. Uh, for every for any case, we have uh, in this this year in the stand we have from uh, MCU's demos to a VLM on device demo and uh, model cascading. So we cover any Edge AI uh, setup you can you can create with Edge Impulse. The Edge Impulse is uh, free to use for non-commercial use. So you can, in principle, the platform makes it easy and helps you along the way by suggesting, let's say, algorithms adjusting setups. It's very intuitive. We made it as intuitive as possible. So we are an edge AI company. Um, what we do is helping you at every step of the way into uh, from data acquisition to uh, data uh, tuning to creating a model, helping you select the algorithms, helping, helping you select the signal processing, which many people might not know about. So there's a uh, state of the art technologies uh, like ML, like uh, embedded. Not everybody knows everything, every step of the way, developing models that are optimal, that are performant for a, for a specific device that, does, uh, that is uh, efficiently executing inference uh, of a model in that device. That's very hard to do. Even for experts, it takes a lot of time. It's very time consuming. What we do is uh, from zero, even if you don't have any data, we help you acquire that data. We help you uh, train, the, train the model with that data, select the algorithm. And then when, when you have a model that works, you can iterate on it. And, uh, and make it optimal, efficient for the device of your choice. And we deploy to all kinds of devices, all kinds of, uh, of setups. Um, even if you don't have a device in mind, we can deploy to uh, a C++ library, a Docker container, anything that helps you iterate fast, see how your model performs. We support everything. If you have an MPU, we will use it. If you only have an MCU available, we will use it for your use case. Of course, it depends on your use case. Uh, Time series data on an, M on an MCU is, is ideal. Image processing is a different story. It depends on the capacity of your device, but we, uh, we are very good at optimizing the model as much as possible with our compiler technology, with our uh, Eon Tuner technology to help you select like what will be the best performance for that possible for that model in that device. Usually, if you, uh, if you, if you stay reasonable, right? If you don't want to run uh, an LLM on an MCU, that, that won't work. But if you stay reasonable, if you have a time series data that perhaps as you created the model won't run in your device at the moment because it has uh, too much RAM consumption or what, Edge Impulse has many tools and, uh, and flows to help you optimize the model or your use case. And usually we manage to crunch, whether it's uh, memory that you need, which is the most common case to uh, performance, we can help you get there, uh, whether it's uh, by our own optimizing processes to end up quantizing or whatever is needed to make it work on your device. Object detection is very uh, common, very used in industrial settings. Uh, visual anomaly detection, it's, uh, it's huge. So basically, what many customers, one common problem in ML in general is uh, the data, right? And many people are like, okay, I wanna detect when something is wrong, but I don't have I don't know what can be wrong. I don't know exactly what it is, but I know how it looks when it's right. right? So we have demos here that show uh, conveyor belts that use anomaly detection to understand when, um, when the object that's passing on the conveyor belt is, uh, has anomalies just because we trained it on non-anomalous um, objects. Right? So that's a very, very common case. Uh, other uh, common cases are uh, time series based on uh, machine vibration, right? You train the model on what's the normal vibration of a concrete machine or a particular machine. And once it detects anomalies on that vibration, which wouldn't be perceptible by humans easily, the model will immediately uh, raise it and act on that. The advantage of running on the edge is basically inference on device instead of the cloud. You are not dependent on anything else but the device. The, dev the device can make its own decisions the device can detect uh, anomalies. You can even think of hybrid models in which you have both. You have, uh, you have uh, inference in the cloud, but also inference in the device. So the device only sends what's interesting into the cloud, right? Uh, let's say an object detection on device that uh, if, you're, if you're looking for anything in a scenario, if you're looking for wild animals in, uh, in the forest, but if you have a device out in the forest that is uh, inferencing all the time, looking for anything to see, 
and kind of uh, applying algorithms to it, it will run out of batteries very soon. But there is, if you have a device that is just running a very light uh, object detection, will detect them maybe uh, later on. You can send it, you can uh, compile this data, send it to an LLM. In here, we have a nested device uh, demo that is using exactly that. So they're using an MCU with very, very uh, low consumption, lightweight uh, model running on the MCU uh, as an object detection that passes the cropped image of the model to a, to a normally detection um, model. So you can run both models in parallel. You can uh, intercept uh, the, um, the output of one model um, before it hits the other one instead of having only one model doing it all. And in other uh, theoretical scenarios, again, energy consumption. You have a device that's capable of both, but you only want to, uh, to highlight the interesting things. Uh, Edge AI has its, uh, its uses, especially in speed of inference, um, in uh, energy consumption, in privacy, immediacy of, uh, of, uh, of an answer, decision making in the field. You don't, you don't want to rely on network connectivity for important decisions, right? So uh, in that case, you want a device who can um, inference quick and make decisions for you. You can iterate quick. You, st you can start with a, a minimal amount of data, already see how your model taking the data, what's the performance. Um, we have several demos here that use a, a few dozen images with a that already give you a reasonable performance. So we start with a proof of concept that allows you to, all right, this is what I want. This model is going the direction I want, then I can add data, right? I don't have that much data for a reliable model. Well, in Edge Impulse, you can, uh, you can create synthetic data in a million ways. Synthetic data is data that uh, does not exist, it's created on demand. That is, for example, a, a reasonable way to generate synthetic data. You can generate from an existing photo. Imagine that you have a limited set of data and use uh, um, an LLM to create, to generate more, uh, to use Genia to generate more data based on that, similar to it, changing colors, changing lighting, and you can enhance your data too, which is very important. You imagine that you have a good set of data, but uh, you can always improve it with uh, adding metadata in form of labels, right? So if you have, a, let's say, a set of data to um, analyze whether people are wearing hard hats in a factory, but then that model is working fine, that's all good. And then you change, you apply this model in a different factory, different lightning, different color vest, etc. Suddenly the model is, is not performing as well. Um, you can retrain the model on new images, new data, or you could uh, enhance AI, AI uh, labeling and help you like take the initial set of data and ask the LLM like, hey, can you tell me uh, how many of these uh, people are wearing hard hats of this color, like ignore that color, etc., etc. So having more data, always better, always better. So uh, nothing beats having a lot of relevant data. Even if you have a, a small subset of real data, if this small subset is complemented by loads of uh, synthetic data, which is not as good because it's not real, but that's better than not having the synthetic data, right? Like as long as the synthetic data is, is is relevant and is close to your real data, more data will always make a, a model more, um, more precise, more versatile in real situations. Usually the, most, the problem most often is creating that data or analyzing that or labeling data. If you have to do that manually, it's really hard. Right? Data sets are big and that's a, that's a big problem. It's expensive. Or you could just, uh, just do it in, uh, in half an hour and it's simple.